Okay, everyone, in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the ways that we can put in mathematics. And we've already poked around a little bit in LaTeX trying to do that with this align environment. So I'm just going to comment out that code. I'm going to select it all. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to press Command forward slash. And that's going to comment all of that code. If I want to undo that, I can press Command forward slash again. And it's just going to mean that when I compile this code, all of that stuff's going to magically disappear. Okay, but it's still here actually in my code. I imagine that that's probably uh, control forward slash on a Windows machine, but don't quote me on that. So first way that we can put in maths is we can just write it in line with the rest of everything that we're doing. So um, often we write our maths in line um, and I'll just put in an example like let's do sine x equals one perhaps okay compile that so when I say in line it's just basically right in there in the sentence on the line it's not on its own line it's in line with the, everything else now if you look at this uh, what we've got over here, it looks pretty good, but I think you can see the problem. This X here is not in italics, but that X there is really a variable quantity. And so the convention is we want that to be in sort of slanted italic type as opposed to upright Roman type. How do we get this to do what we want? What we're going to do is we're going to use dollar symbols like that. And now you can see that the color of the thing has changed and that's our sort of visual cue to say that oh yeah we're in maths mode now okay which is exactly what we want we want to be in maths mode because now when we compile our code look at what happens all of a sudden we've got an italic x here which is great what isn't so good is that sin now has been pushed over it's in slanted sort of italic type as well which suggests to us that we're multiplying S times I times N, which of course isn't what we want to do. That's really an operator there. That's a function that's operating on that X and spitting something out. So how do we get our operator? We need to have a forward slash right there. And you can see that's changed uh, the color of sign. I don't think it does that on all editors, by the way, but certainly in Overleaf, it seems to be doing that. So now when we compile, we've got our upright letters here. So there's no, no one's going to think, oh, we're multiplying S by I by N. Of course, we could have had cosine in there, or we could have had tangent, or we could have had uh, log, or whatever your favorite operator is. All of these things are basically in there um, like that. So this is inline text. I'm just going to really emphasize that word inline, so forward slash emph and capture that inside some curly brackets like that. Uh, that's the way that we emphasize text when we're writing LaTeX. Okay, what's another way that we can do this? We can write our text, uh, we can write our maths displayed on its own line, or we can display our maths. <clears throat> now, we still need to go into maths mode when we do this, but there's a different way. It's no longer dollar symbols. It's forward slash open square bracket, forward slash closed square bracket, like that. And what are we going to do? Maybe we can just do, I don't know, x plus 2y equals 3 or something. Full stop, of course, because we're ending a sentence here. We started the sentence with a capital letter, and so we better end our sentence with a terminal stop like that. Okay, compile that. And you can see, yep, we're getting our italic X, we're getting our italic Y, and as an added bonus, we're getting our maths on its own line there, which is really fantastic. Two sort of main ways that you can put in maths. You can either put them, you put your maths in line, or you can display. Let's emphasize that. You can display your maths like that. Now, uh, another couple of things that we might want to do is we might have an equation that's particularly interesting um, or important, whereas 
x plus 2y equals 3 doesn't sound very important. There are certain things which are super, super important in maths. And uh, for that reason, we might want to put a little equation number next to that really important piece of math so that we can refer back to it and the reader is going to be able to easily follow what we're talking about. Um, to do that, we use an equation environment. So to um, number our equations, we do, okay, forward slash begin. And in our square, in our curly brackets here, we're going to go equation like that. And I can see it popping up there. And this is where we're going to put it. Now, what can we put in here? Let's put in um, the uh, the trig version of the Pythagorean theorem, perhaps. So cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. What does this one equal, everyone? That's right, equals one. And I'm going to put a full stop there because I started my sentence with a capital letter. I better end it with a, a terminal stop. Let's compile that and see what we get. And isn't that great? Now we have an equation number over here on the right. And remember what we said before, you can have left equation numbers or right equation numbers depending on your preference. Uh, I think the default is left equation number, so I'll just comment out this by going command forward slash, and um, now that should pop our equation number over there to the left. I don't like that. Um, I've never really liked it over there on the left. I don't know why that is, but there you go. Okay, so three different ways. We've got our inline with dollar signs. We've got our square bracket form where we display our maths. Um, X plus Y equals three. We we can put equation numbers using an equation environment. And then, of course, as we had before, we can um, align our maths. Um, so I'll actually just flat out delete this so we can see this emerging again. We can line up our equations by doing begin, so forward slash begin. In our curly brackets here, we're going to put align. And I'm going to go for a line stars because I don't want all of these to be numbered. If I did want numbers, um, I would go with just a plain align, but a line star. And let's just rearrange this equation a little bit and see what we get. Okay, so let's start with this. Like this. And now we want to go on to the next line, so double forward slash. And now let's put in some fractions. Let's divide everything we see here by cosine squared theta. Okay, so forward slash frac. And in the first set of curly brackets, what we're going to do is we're going to put our numerator. In the second set of curly brackets, we're going to put our denominator. So let's start with this guy here. That's going to be our numerator. And we're dividing everything by cosine squared theta, so that's going to be our denominator. I'll just compile it now and, and show you what we've got so far. Still a work in progress, of course, but you can see the fraction emerging there. That's the, the way that we put in fractions. All right. I think it's a good strategy when you're doing LaTeX to copy your code um, and not reinvent the wheel so much. So you can really save a lot of time uh, sorry, I want to keep that one as cosine, don't I? You can really save a lot of time if you're copying code and reusing it um, to save uh, keystrokes. Okay, and now, <clears throat> now we need equals 1 over cosine squared theta. So um, frac 1 over... Oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? Probably this was a better way of going. Just copy what we had before and make our numerator one yeah okay next line um now what is cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta that's one what is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta that's right it's tangent squared theta and what is one over cosine squared theta, that is secant squared theta. Whoops. I 
inventing functions here. I'm going to put a full stop there now, actually, because I think we're done. Although I can see that this won't line up properly, will it? Because we haven't told LaTeX. We're getting lots of lines of equations, which is great, but we haven't told LaTeX where to line things up. Remember, if we want to tell it where to line things up, we need to put an ampersand. All right. So I want to line up the equal symbol. So that's where I'm going to put an ampersand at this equal symbol, at this equal symbol, at this equal symbol right there. And now I'm just going to have a little sanity check. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Divide everything by cosine squared theta. Yep, looks pretty good to me. One tangent squared theta, secant squared theta. One other thing I'm just thinking before we um, shut this video down um, is we're defining by cosine squared theta. I just want to tell the reader that we want to rule out the possibility that cosine squared theta equals zero. Um, so I'd like to put a little explanation off to the side when I do that. So let's find the line where I start doing that. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go ampersand, ampersand. And that's just going to jump me over to the right a little bit. And in brackets, I'm just going to put um, my explanation here. Right, so I'm going to say that cosine theta is not equal to zero. So forward slash NEQ zero like that. I think that's good practice to, you know, just for our own benefit, but also in particular for our reader's benefit to kind of just say, look, we're doing this. I know this is potentially a bit dodgy. If, if cosine theta vanished, we would be dividing by zero. So we're just ruling that out with this little bit of explanation right here. Um, some people like to put that in square brackets or curly brackets or whatever. But I think whatever you do, it's a good idea just along the way if you've got many lines of equations to kind of just help the reader a little bit and say, hey, um, I'm not doing anything illegal here. Okay, so they're the main ways that we can put in maths, inline, displayed, equation environments, align environments, um, and have a play around with those and see what you come up with.